you know, the Matrix was battling the enemy out there, picking them out. I'm going to find those enemies. I'm going to get that enemy until I realized that until you conquer the enemy in yourself, you can't deal with anyone. Lauren Hill is without a doubt one of the most talented figures in the music industry, and her disappearance from the spotlight is still a complete mystery. It's been 25 years since Lauren's iconic solo album, The Miseducation of Lauren Hill, was released, and we still don't know if Lauren will ever grace us with another project. There's been a lot of speculation over the years about why Lauren left behind her fame and success and stopped recording music. Lauren's former Fuji's bandmate, Proz, recently claimed that Lauren stopped making albums because she was uninspired. You guys are still close. Did she tell you why she stopped making albums? She just felt uninspired. That's it. That's it. However, most artists feel uninspired at a certain point, and they don't just decide to just completely abandon their career. So what really happened to Lauryn Hill that made her leave the industry? And why does she claim that she will never return to music? Sometimes in order to be used, you also have to be humiliated. You have to be humiliated sometimes. You have to be kicked and beaten. Few female artists have been as influential as Lauryn Hill, and if you ask any of the modern day superstars, both male and female, who inspired them the most, they will all name Lauryn as their biggest role model. Um, are you looking forward to see uh, Lauryn Hill on stage? Are you gonna, are you gonna stick around? Yes, or? I, Lauryn Hill is my hero. I think I've probably listened to Miseducation by Lauryn Hill the most. Really? Wow. Like, I think, like, I mean, it's like kind of flawless. Quick questions for you. Who is your biggest musical influence? Lauren Hill. Ooh. Lauren Hill keeps coming up. I always wanted to do something with her. We never got a chance to do that anything would yet. Be Please. Crazy. I think Lauren was on top of the world after dropping one of the best albums of all time, The Miseducation of Lauren Hill, in 1998. And it was clear that she was on her way to becoming a living legend. And while no one can dispute her legendary status, it's still very strange that she never released another solo album. Now, to be clear, Lauren didn't stop making music altogether after The Miseducation was released. In July 2001, she performed new material for a taping of an MTV Unplugged special, which was later released as a live album titled MTV Unplugged number 2.0. She also continued touring in the early 2000s. However, as time went by, her public appearances were just less frequent. In 2003, Rolling Stone published a report titled The Mystery of Lauryn Hill, questioning why she dropped out of the public eye. According to Rolling Stone, in 1998 and 1999, Lauryn grossed $40 million and pocketed $25 million of that. She was also offered roles in multiple high-budget Hollywood productions and was in talks to appear in blockbusters like Charlie's Angels, The Born Identity, The Mexican, and The Matrix Trilogy. However, she turned down all of these big offers and stopped releasing music. So what happened? Why did Lauren pass on all these opportunities? Well, in the early 2000s, reports emerged that Lauren suffered some kind of breakdown after getting close to her spiritual advisor, Brother Anthony. Roz later claimed that Lauren gave him a tape of Brother Anthony's teaching, and he described it as some real cult shit. I couldn't believe that this dude was really serious, Pra said. On the advice of Brother Anthony, Lauren fired her whole management team, started going to Bible study classes five days a week, and she also stopped doing interviews, watching TV, and listening to music. Some sources also claim that Brother Anthony influenced Lauren's infamous rant against the Catholic Church at the 2003 Christmas concert at the Vatican. Lauren blasted the church from the stage, accusing the Vatican officials of being corrupt and apparently making references to the scandal involving the essay of children by Catholic priests in the U.S. Lauren addressed the Vatican cardinals and bishops in the audience telling them, I did not come here to celebrate the birth of Christ with you, but to ask you why you are not in mourning for his death inside this place. She went on to say, God has been a witness to the corruption of his leadership, to the exploitation and abuses, and screamed at the Catholic officials to repent. Now, at this point, Lauren had already given birth to four children. However, some sources claim that her scathing speech against the child SA was inspired by her own trauma. While Lauren never publicly talked about this, multiple sources alleged that she was groomed as a teenager by shady men in the industry, including her former Fuji's bandmate, Wyclef John. Lauren was a freshman in high school when one of her friends introduced her to Proz, who was looking for a singer for the music group he was creating. Lauren and Proz started performing under the name Translator Crew with another female vocalist. However, this other singer was soon replaced by Proz's cousin, Wyclef John. Wyclef was six years older than Lauren, who was reportedly just 13 or 14 when they first met. And according to some insiders, Wyclef immediately started making moves on Lauren. Eventually, Lauren and Wyclef started dating 
thing. However, they kept their romance a secret from the public and there was apparently a lot of drama going on behind the scenes. Wyclef later claimed Fuji's broke up because of his relationship with Lauren and he also revealed that he was married to his wife Claudinette while he and Lauren were still involved. In his autobiography, Purpose, Wyclef alleged that Lauren lied about the paternity of her first child, Zion, and tried to convince him that the baby was his, even though the real father was Bob Marley's son, Rowan. Wyclef also claimed in his autobiography that Lauren was physically abusive, writing, we had fights on the plane, we had huge fights, and a few times it went down. She started swinging at me right there in the seats. However, Wyclef refused to take any responsibility for the dysfunctional relationship, and he suggested in his book that Lauren has always been crazy. But Lauren's side of the story was a bit different, and in her 2004 interview with Trace Magazine, she hinted that Wyclef was the aggressive and controlling one. The Fugees was a conspiracy to control, to manipulate, and to encourage dependence, Lauren said. I took a lot of abuse that many people would not have taken under these circumstances. And when asked a comment about her relationship with Wyclef, Lauren said, as a young woman, I saw the best in everyone, but I did not see the lust and insecurities of men. I discovered what a lie was and how lies manifested themselves. So whether it was the spiritual advisor, mental health issues, the controlling relationship with Wyclef, or the overall toxicity of the music industry, Lauren made the decision to disappear from the spotlight and she reportedly has no plans on ever making a comeback. But one friend who refused to be named recently told Essence Magazine that Lauren ruined her own career because she has a history of blaming her problems on those she trusts. She wants the people in her employ to fear her because she confuses it with respect, the insider said. However, Talib Kweli had a different take on Lauren, telling Essence, when an artist gives a piece of their soul to the public, she doesn't necessarily get that back. And when you're constantly giving huge trunks of yourself as Lauren was, sometimes you have to do things that seem eccentric or crazy to maintain your own sanity. Now, as for Lauren herself, in 2021, she agreed to do a rare interview for Rolling Stone's 500 Greatest Albums podcast, and she hinted that she had to step away from the spotlight to protect herself and her family from the dark and negative energy she was exposed to in the industry. I sacrificed the quality of my life to help people experience something that had been unreachable before then, Lauren said. When I saw people struggle to appreciate what that took, I had to pull back and make sure I and my family were safe and good. I'm still doing that. She also went on to say that a celebrity is often treated like a sacrifice. The a cow boxed in and harshly judged for very normal and natural responses to abnormal circumstances. By the way, doesn't this last quote remind you of what Dave Chappelle said about celebrities who get labeled as crazy as soon as they go against the status quo? The worst thing to call somebody is crazy, is dismissive. I don't understand this person, so they're crazy. That's bullshit. These people are not crazy, they're strong people. Maybe the environment is a little sick. Now, as for fans, they're saying Lauren's situation should be a lesson on what can happen to pure and talented souls who get involved with the wrong people. One fan said, Lauren learned a very difficult lesson that takes people decades to realize. Don't be trying to save other people when you yourself are either not strong enough or not in a safe place. You both will drown. Peace to the woman who inspires so many but had to be dragged through the mud in order to find redemption. And another fan wrote, getting involved with the wrong men can totally drain someone in a way you cannot fathom. Not that they're terrible human beings, Things, but they are terrible for you. She could have handled the industry, so it definitely wasn't that. But you still got life, Lauren. You can restore your soul. I love you, sister. But how do you feel about Lauren's disappearance from the spotlight? What do you think was the final straw that made her quit the music industry? Comment down below and don't miss out on this next video.